Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I would like to test how good Git performs on a large scale product. So in this case, we have a mono repository where we put art files, engine files, stuff like rendering files, and also server code. If you do, for example, something on a backend, uh, if you have a game that uh, has a continuous service running, you have everything in one single Git repository. We would like to test how well Git performs on scaling. So this whole project overall contains like almost 400 gigabytes and 300 30,000 files at all. And we would like to push this to a self-hosted GitLab instance. So I have already imported this project to Anchor Point. This will be basically our Git application, our Git client in this case. The reason why we use Anchor Point is because it has the features like sparse checkout and Git LFS on board, and it configures them automatically. And this is nice because um, here, for example, I don't have set up a Git attributes file. This is what Anchor Point will do automatically once I do the commit. And all these files like PSD, EXR files, anything what is basically marked as binary, will be then automatically marked as LFS. So we will push this to a GitLab server. All right, so this is the repository. We will push everything in. And one thing we need to do before we need to start a commit is to check if we have enough disk space. So why do we need to do this? Um, because Git by itself, so remember, this project has almost free, almost 400 gigabytes. And when we will do the initial commit, Git will need to do also a stage. And staging means that it has to copy all these files in a temporary location that they will be ready for push. Once this basically is done, and once the commit is done, we can continue working, and Anchor Point will be able to push all these files in the background. But during this push, you need to have at least the same amount of empty space on disks because that's the amount the cache file takes. So in this case, I have um, enough disk space so um, I can do this commit. And once all the files are then pushed to GitLab, then this cache will be cleaned and I will have my free disk space again for later. All right, so let's start with it and let's do an initial commit. All right, I'm back again. So the commit is done and it took almost three hours to make it ready. And in the next step, I would like to push this to GitLab. So let's just press push. And let me open up the progress. All right, we are back on this project again after a few weeks of taking the break. The push is finished and all my files are uploaded to GitLab and it took, in my case, 30 hours to do so. And it will be different in your case, depending on your internet connection and of course, internet stability. So let's get over to GitLab and see if all the files are there. And here I have the same structure. And for example, if I, can, if I look at the engine folder here, the same one should be definitely here on GitLab as well. All right. So here we can also take a look at the git attributes file and this was generated by anchor point. So this is pretty long because this repository has a lot of, lot of files. And this file is definitely necessary so that all the files are uploaded to LFS so that the git repo limitations don't count here. All right, let's go and close GitLab and go back to anchor point. And the next thing we want to do, so we would like to work on this, but there is a problem with that. So if we have 300,000 files working on git, all the git commands like git status or reverting files will be slow because Git has to traverse 300,000 files all the time. Um, but in normal cases, we don't need to have all these files available on our computer. So in my case, I would like to have only the value of the ancient project here, and I don't need the rest right now. I can have everything on GitLab, so when I want it, I would like to download this, but I don't need this on my local computer. So what I will do is using Git sparse checkout, and we will unload all the things that we don't need. For example, I don't need the server module here, and I can do a right click, and say unload. And this will basically wipe the whole content of the folder. It will be there in GitLab, but it won't be there locally on my computer. All right, so the whole project is in a sparse state because of this cloud icon here and the server folder, when I click on that, it tells me that this is only available online. And I would like to do all the same for all the other folders except this project folder here. So I unloaded everything except this um, Unreal Engine project. I didn't want to go for the value of the ancient, I go for the steampunk project. And now I did already some work on that. So I converted the whole thing to external actors using one file per actor and moved some objects around. And let's say we commit this, moved objects. And now I do a push and it will do a commit and push basically. And that should happen at a decent speed because um, Git in this case will only have to look at this folder. So. And it's basically what it does. It did the commit and now it's pushing. And while it's pushing, I can still continue working. So let's move some things around. Let's maybe move this guy around. Let's move this thing here around. 
just that we get some changes. I don't want to do anything meaningful. All right, we save everything and then you go back to anchor point. You have to wait until the changed files will appear. And it shows me the changed files in this case. In the meantime, the push is currently also done. So, and now we can add another commit message and push again. And it does not matter that the repo is pretty big. So to extend this, in the next upcoming days, I would like to push more and more files to GitLab so that I definitely reach the one terabyte mark. All right, I'm done with this. So I created all these kinds of commits. And if you go to GitLab, let me bring this over here. We definitely have one terabyte uploaded to GitLab. That's basically my project on GitLab. On my own computer, I of course don't have one terabyte of project space here because I only checked out here the Steampunk project. That's the only project basically I have actively on my computer. So let me just quickly show you one other thing what I have done to keep the repository size pretty small. And this is in the project settings under Git. I have the clear cache command. And this is basically a command that cleans all the LFS cache, all the files that I don't need. And this is basically the same like git LFS prune. And what we have done, we contributed to the LFS development to extend this to make it pretty safe so that it always checks to remote and always cleans cache files that are available on GitLab so that it will never clean a file that is not on the remote server. This is a contribution we made to git LFS. And once the LFS update comes out, you can also use this in the command line. So now let me check how an external collaborator would work on that big repository. Okay, I'm on another computer here and let me join the Git repository. So here I need to go to a path and let's specify this folder and I may need to log into GitLab, but I will definitely not download everything. So I join. First of all, I need to log into the self-hosted GitLab. So all right, now it needs to download the text files. So even if I said, don't download everything. This is true for LFS files. But for all the text files, because that's the decentralized part of it, Git needs to download them. All right, that's all of it. So right now, if we go to the project, nothing is basically in it, except the git ignore git attributes and the anchor point file, and of course the git folder. So now we can go to the engine and then pick our Steampunk project, and we can say download it. So, all right, I got the Unreal project right now. And if I want, I could also download the proper art files that I need to this project. So this is what you need to work on a large scale project with Git LFS. If you want to know how to set up and configure your GitLab server, go to our blog. We added some annotations, what we have done to make it run pretty performant in this case. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you and could show you how you can use Git on large scale projects. Thank you for watching.